What's up everyone? Welcome to Midwest Shred Vlogs. This is Jimmy. Thanks for tuning in to this episode. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and please guys share this episode with as many people as possible. I want to use this episode and Mark's writing to inspire as many people as possible to learn how to snowboard, learn new tricks and just to have fun snowboarding. This video is a little, a little long but it's definitely worth the watch. There's a cool interview with Mark towards the end of this episode. Thanks for tuning in guys. Enjoy.
to get the shot and I almost clipped that girl. <laughs> Got you right to the end. I almost hit that girl out like literally. <laughs> I missed her by, I, I actually went over the front of her skis, but <laughs> wow. What's up guys, it's Jimmy from Midwest Shred Vlogs. Uh, today we're doing a, a special segment that's called uh, Someone You Should Know. And today we have a special guest, his name is Mark. Uh, he's a local uh, snowboarder from uh, Wisconsin and his home mountain is uh, Granite Peak. So uh, Mark, uh, you know, uh, you're an inspiration to, to a lot of us. Uh, you know, um, I, I watched you uh, like on a snowboarding addiction video and, and that's how I kind of learned a little bit about you. Uh, but uh, tell us uh, how old you are, Mark. Uh, 50 years old. And, and uh, just coming up on 51 in a couple months. Uh, I started snowboarding when I was 40. And uh, I've been coming here to Granite Peak for about eight years. It's a uh, great mountain, as you know. Um, 
of the, uh, you mentioned snowboard addiction, and like, that's uh, a tutorial company out there that I've been using. Very professional, so you can, like me, you know, start from scratch, and uh, and just one little uh, one little success at a time. You know, learning how to carve, learning how to ride a switch, and uh, building up to where now I feel like a pretty comfortable rider. Oh, I wouldn't say it, I'm not, you know, I'll, got a long ways to go before I call myself good, but uh, anyway, I don't know. I, I, I would say he's, he's pretty good. Um, if you guys haven't seen Mark ride, uh, this guy can throw big 360s. Uh, he's got a backflip in his bag of tricks. This guy can ride. Um, <laughs> so the, the funny thing, the way I, I actually uh, heard about you is, uh, you know, like I was here about like two or three years ago, like, you know, riding Granite Peak. And uh, I was like at one of like the drop-ins. And I remember seeing your blue coat. You always wear this blue coat. Yeah, I do. And then, uh, but I didn't see you ride or anything like that. But uh, like on the drive home, I was looking through my emails and I saw like a snowboard addiction uh, email. And it said something to, to the effect that this 50 year old is better than you. Oh yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah. yeah. And then so so I clicked on the link. And uh, and the funny thing is, I, I it was you, the same guy that I saw on the drop. And I'm like, no, no way. <laughs> Then I clicked on it and I saw like the Granite Peak thing yeah. going on, you know, so. Yeah, that, that video, uh, a lot of people saw it. It was called 47 and Better Than You and I felt like an idiot because it said I'm better than you. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'm better than you, <laughs> you know, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, if, if anybody's watching this and you're in your 40s or 50s, uh, definitely don't sell yourself short. Um, that's the one thing I've done is, is kind of, uh, never tell myself I can't do something or I'm too old to do something. Yeah. I, I'm definitely an average, you know, when it comes to athletics, I'm average. Okay. So if I can do it, anybody can. Mm -hmm. It's just being consistent and keeping uh, keeping your mind open to learning and thinking, if I can do this, and then once you get it down, saying, well, what's one step further, you know? Right, yeah. So uh, uh, the 360s, that was a pinnacle achievement. And then, you know, it starts to get old and it's like, uh, the, the, the back foot thing entered into my mind, and uh, why not? You know, you look at it, it's not mechanically really hard. It's just a mental thing. And uh, But you gotta go out and find what is the progressional things, you know? So with that, it was off the back of the boat, uh, foam pit, trampoline, I found an airbag. So I'm not like a kid that just can go out there and wing it, and yeah, hope yeah. for the best, and then, you know, try it again. It, it, it had to. I had to do it and not get injured. Yeah. So, so there you go, guys. So if you guys want to do the backflip, you know, like Mark said, you got to do it in steps. Don't go out there and just try to huck it. You know, you don't want to get injured. But yeah, I mean, you land those pretty clean, you know, the, the way they look. Most of them, you know, honestly, as long as you get around and you don't land on your head, you're going to be okay. And the odds of you not getting around are, are slim. I mean, once you, once you commit, in fact, that's it. As long as you commit, you can't back out once you're, once you're yeah. starting it. Which I have tried. It didn't work out very well. Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, it's it's actually the backflip. I keep coming to that, but it's not it's not that hard. Uh, everything's fun. I mean, uh, riding switch if you haven't done that before, and you know, do it. It's fun. One uh, eighties, trying to tail press and nose press and. and you know what? I'm rambling. You're gonna have to no, no, no. It's all good. no. It's all it's it's, it's uh, all good. Well, that's, so let, that's what I would say. If you're if you're in your forties, the takeaway from me being in my fifties is keep working at little things and never ever tell yourself, "Well, I'll never do a 180 or I'll never do a 360 or whatever." Because you very likely could. You just don't know because you haven't been doing it long enough. As you go through each progressional step, it opens up another door. Yeah, yeah. And and for me, like when when I ride. Uh, I don't know what it is, but I like to put myself in uncomfortable situations, like whether it's learning a new trick or hitting a bigger jump. Yeah. What is it that, that motivates you to, to keep going to, and learning more? Is it just if you get that same feeling or, or it, what is it? It absolutely is. In fact, I think anybody who snowboards, the fact that you're snowboarding, you're kind of drawn towards things that might hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't yeah. want to get hurt, but uh, yeah. so with that in mind, honestly, another thing that I do that I would suggest to anybody who's older, if you want to progress, and you don't want to spend one week on the hill and two weeks recovering is get some protective equipment so uh, like right now I've got I've got hard kneecaps um, I've got a back protector I've got some, some little elbow protection because I fall all the time and I want to be able to get up and still have fun I don't want to ruin my day and if you don't have protection you're not gonna take the risk because you don't want to ruin your whole day or ruin your season you know so uh, protection is another 
uh, keeping an open mind and then protecting yourself so you can keep failing right. yeah. working at it to yeah. get it right. Yeah, so. that's cool. And so let me ask you this. So you have two sons, right? Yeah. So Bryce, what are they? Yeah, so what, Bryce and Tanner. Yeah, yeah. And, and Tanner's good. I, I, I saw him last year. You were teaching him how to do a 360. Yeah. And he was like a little worried, but then he just threw it and it was, yeah. it was perfect, you know? That's right. So let me ask you this. What do, what do they think about their dad doing like backflips, doing threes, and just, you know, are they like, dad, throw it, throw it, or are they just like, dad, stop? What, no, what, what they, they, they think it's cool. They're cool with all that. They like, like it. They like riding with me. Uh, they don't like when I get the camera out so much. Okay. It's kind of annoying to them because I'm like you. Yeah. I like, I like, I just like filming. Yeah. I love but uh, a lot of times they'll tell me they're proud. They'll tell me, Dad, Dad, after you went down, you should have hurt everybody. Because the kids are all sitting up on the hill, and I don't yeah. get to hear that. But yeah. if they're standing there, sometimes they'll tell me, and it's it's pretty cool because they're, you know, I look old, and uh, you know, I look older than I feel, and. They see that and they're like, "Holy crap, that old guy, yeah. you know, did whatever," <laughs> and uh, they're just not used to seeing it. Now, you know, uh, I will say we're all snowboarders, so mm -hmm. that's pretty new. I mean, when I was in high school, there was very few of them, and the ones that did, you kind of hated them because they, they, you know, in my mind, they were back in the hill and everything. But but now, uh, with us being older, I transferred over to snowboarding. It's kind of breaking ground. There's not a lot of. 45, 50 year old guys yeah. in the park. Um, you see the skiers, they're killing it. Because yeah, they've been yeah. doing it all their life. Right, yeah. So right. that's the other thing is don't think that you can't do something because you don't see anybody else doing it. Yeah. Because the only reason you don't see anybody else doing it is because we're really just emerging now. The yeah. guys that started in the, in the uh, 70s and 80s are just now getting to their 40s and 50s. So you might not see it going on. It doesn't mean it's not realistic. You're gonna have to edit this out too. No, no, it's a, no, I, it's I all good. Like, this is no, this is good. This is good. <laughs> let me let me ask you this: What, what board do you, do you ride? I ride a Never Summer Proto. It, what size is it? It's uh, 154, yeah. which is a little bit shorter than normal for for, for me for parking. Um, thing with the Proto, they have a they have another model at Slingshot or sl something, but it's yeah. it's softer. I'm 195 pounds. Oh, you are? Yeah. So I like a stiff board. For me, it's probably the equivalent of a park board for a guy that's yeah. 150. Uh, so it's a, it's a uh, never summer Proto. I used to ride a Burton. Okay. That's pretty much it. Those yeah. two boards. Bur <laughs> Burton's a never summer, but I've been with never summer for a long time. The thing I can say about them is they have an they're great great boards, but their warranty second to none. Yeah. I had one that uh, was all choppy on the bottom, mm -hmm. and it just wouldn't keep the wax on. Okay. And it was frustrating me because I like yeah. to keep my boards waxed and I go one time and it's all white and choppy on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I called them up, I sent them pictures. I didn't think they would do anything. They, yeah. they replaced my board nice. because I wasn't satisfied with the base. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, nice. that's, you know, cool. I was surprised. So that's, that's awesome. Uh, Interbase cool. in Colorado. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we, a, a few, like three of us here, we, we ride on the, the fun slingers. And we oh, love okay. It. So you know what yeah, I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. And, and what angles do you ride? If you ever get fat, go to the Proto because it'll oh, all right. flex about the same. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what angles do you ride? Uh, I try to keep it under a combined uh, 30 degrees. Okay. So I've got, I think I'm at 12 and a half and 12 and a half. That's just something I, I also uh, <laughs> had heard that if you get too aggressive, yeah. you're, you start to feel it in the knees. Yeah, that's, I hear that too. But yeah. the flip side of that is, is even at... 12 and a half, my toes are kind of hanging over. I almost think I need to go to a, a wider board. Yeah. When you really lay it on edge, right, yeah. they start yeah. trenching. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I can, uh, yeah. So let me ask you this. If you had to pick, would you pick riding park or riding powder? That's a tough one. Uh, <laughs> it depends on where I'm at. So if I'm out west, powder. Powder all the way. Um, back, you know, back country, I would love to get into that. But realistically, I've only had a few opportunities in my life. Um, but it's fun. Mm -hmm. The thing is, here in the Midwest, honestly, powder <laughs> yeah. is great for the top of the hill. But as soon as you, as soon as you get into the run out, you're like, okay, this sucks. Yeah. I mean, I hate to say that. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, shoot, you know what? Cut that out. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be dissing my home. <laughs> but no, really. For, <laughs> the thing is, is no, the, that's true. That's, the, that's not. I feel like bad, the parks you know? are the yeah. great equalizer. Yeah. When you're in the Midwest. Yeah. Uh, it's parked from top to bottom, mm -hmm. and the park, the jumps are built well, the landings are built well, just like they are anywhere else. And uh, um, you don't have to wait to get down. You get off the chairlift, boom, you're in the park. 
you get to the bottom and, and you're just riding park all day long. So you get way more, if you're trying to learn something, you get way more runs, you get way more times through the park than you right. do yeah, out west. No, no, that's true. Out west, you know, you maybe get maybe get 15 times through the park. Here you, you might get you know, 50. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, that's true. And, the, and the problem is here when you get powder, nothing works. You can't make the landings. Um, and maybe that happens out west too. And the tops are great, but they're just it's steep at the top and we have long runouts. So it gets so slow. Anything over six inches and you're at the bottom going like trying to you know, <laughs> yeah. trying to yeah, get right. yourself <laughs> to the chairlift. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Maybe somebody else totally disagree. No, no, I, I, no, I, no. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that, you know? Yeah, yeah. So uh, what would you say uh, to somebody that's you know Thir high thirties, low forties, getting into snowboarding. What would you? What would advice would you give them? Uh, I would say enjoy every aspect of it, from the time that you learn how to just kick along flat ground, uh, to getting off the chairlift, to uh, being able to connect turns and start and stop, until you get up to whatever level. It's really not about how good you are; it's about how much fun you have, um, and. Uh, you know, if you if you keep a good attitude, you're going to progress. So you got to be patient and just enjoy it. You know, don't look at what other people are doing. Don't be embarrassed. Don't uh, have no pride. Just have fun. That's what I exactly. Yeah. You saw me fall today a bunch of times. Yeah, right? I mean, if you're not falling, yeah. you're not progressing. Yeah, yeah. That's the way it is. And when your yeah. pride, when you start to get cocky and you feel like you look good uh, and you don't want to look stupid, you're probably going to stop right there. You're not going to get much better because the only way you can get better is to try new things. And every time you try new things, you're going to fall. Cool, cool. And then you said you, you skied right. first, right? Yeah, I was a skier. Okay, so, Dang. What, <laughs> so what would you say is the cooler part about snowboarding? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. So yeah. here again, um, skiing for me, uh, I, I reached a, a pinnacle where I wasn't willing to take the risk of doing the things that I felt were fun. Uh, and that also, I got to say, I went away to the coast and I got into surfing. Oh, okay. Cool. So when I came back, that was easy transition to yeah. snowboarding. I wanted to keep that lifestyle, I guess, the surfy feel. That's getting off track. You <laughs> cut that out. Uh, what, what I would say is ski, snowboarding to me is more playful and creative. Uh, the buttering and the stuff that you do on flat ground and all over the hill, uh, there's no limit. Um, now, I do see guys that are doing park on their skis that are just thinking outside of the box and they do things that yeah. we didn't do when I was a kid. Uh, so maybe it's maybe it just feels that way to me, having transitioned because I didn't do those things as a kid. But the other thing is an older uh, guy, I like having my, my feet uh, secured. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, the friends that I have that ski and get injured, it's, it's knees, like knees, board knees board all the time. You don't really hear about a whole lot of... Uh, uh, torn ligaments with snow legs. Yeah, that's yeah. No, that's that's very true. That's very true. All right, guys. So we're gonna end it here with Mark, but uh, uh, we're gonna post uh, some videos of him uh, just riding and see for yourself, guys, what you think about Mark and how he rides. Uh, and then uh, I'm gonna post a, a link uh, to uh, just an edit that he made, and you guys can check that out. And you'll see how good this guy really is. So, not that good. Yeah, no, he's good. He's good. But if you see Mark at, at Granite, you know, stop by and say hi to him. One of the nicest guys you'll meet, and he's definitely someone you should know. Um, and he's very inspirational to a lot of us, especially some of us that are getting older. So, you know, thanks so much, Mark, for, for taking the time to, to do this interview with us. And thanks so much for, for taking the time to ride with us and to film with us. So, yeah, it was, it was awesome, man. It was awesome. Awesome, man. Thanks, thanks a lot, Mark. Man. Right. I appreciate it, man. Thanks. Cool.